Welcome to my channel. Um, today I wanted to uh, talk about a controversial topic regarding pumpkin seed oil and hair loss. I know that there's a lot of people with uh, mixed reviews saying that pumpkin seed oil can treat hair loss and there's another group of people saying that no it can't. And so today I wanted to discuss the effects of pumpkin seed oil on fighting male pattern baldness. If you go back to 2014, there's been a big hype regarding a Korean research done on pumpkin seed oil and treating hair loss. And they're claiming that after 24 weeks of people being on pumpkin seed oil treatment, um, the researchers claim that they saw a 40% increase in hair count, which is amazingly better than the results of Nasra. When you actually continue to read the study, and I'll provide it in the link below, um, the patients were actually treated with a health supplement called Octasabol Plus, which contains pumpkin seed oil and a bunch of other ingredients. So then how much hair growth was attributed to pumpkin seed oil and how much hair growth was simply due to the other, other ingredients? So according to their website, one Octasabol capsule contains the following. 100 milligrams of pumpkin seed powder, um, so it's not pumpkin seed oil. It also has a blend of octocosinols, which is a uh, derived form from vegetable powder. Um, but it's known to decrease arterial inflammation, which can cause hair loss. It also has gamma linolenic acid, which is derived from evening primrose powder. It has uh, polyphenols, which also helps reduce estrogen, which is another hormone linked with male pattern baldness. It also has lycopene which decreases inflammation and corn silk extract. So the major flaw of this research was that they didn't have a pumpkin seed oil only test study to see how effective it was against hair loss. Um, so what they really needed to do was they needed to isolate the pumpkin seed oil from all the other ingredients listed in their supplement. Um, instead, their study proclaimed that it was solely pumpkin seed oil that treated hair loss, which is deceptive. And without a pumpkin seed oil uh, test group, we really have no way to find out how much of an effect pumpkin seed oil had on hair growth as well as the other ingredients on it. So does this mean that we need to dismiss the pumpkin seed oil research completely? Um, not necessarily because we know that pumpkin seed oil is rich in micronutrients such as zinc and manganese. Um, it also has vitamin E, phytosterols, and unsaturated fatty acids. So these elements are actually known to improve pattern hair loss by lowering androgen activity. It also reduces inflammation. It also repletes trace elements for hair growth, and it decreases atherosclerosis and blood vessels. So there's actually a study done on rats that showed that pumpkin seed oil actually prevented the prostate enlargement in rats treated with testosterone, likely due to the inhibition of type 2,5 alpha reductase. Human studies were also done that showed the effects of pumpkin seed oil on symptomatic benign prostatic hyperplasia where pumpkin seed oil reduced prostate symptoms all without sexual side effects. So if pumpkin seed oil reduces DHT and inhibits 5-alpha reductase, why doesn't it come with the sexual side effects of finasteride? The answer probably lies due to the fact that finasteride acts as a direct 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. While the pumpkin seed oil might not directly inhibit the 5-alpha reductase, but rather indirectly through another mechanism such as reducing inflammation. So there's actually growing evidence of the presence of inflammation in the scalp of balding individuals. And so pumpkin seed oil likely decreases the inflammation. Um, by decreasing the ex expression of inflammatory signaling proteins. And in the absence of these signaling proteins, our bodies would express fewer 5-alpha reductase in the inflammatory sites. So the net results would be lower DHT in the sites of inflammation, which is a good thing because inflammation and hair loss are closely connected and pumpkin seed oil might actually fight inflammation in a variety of ways. Pumpkin seed oil has anti-inflammatory properties. We know that chronic inflammation promotes the formation of arterial plaque in the blood vessels supporting hair follicles, and plaque buildup can lead to calcification in the blood vessels supporting hair follicles, which leads to reduced blood flow and oxygen, which causes um, hairs to miniaturize. So if you want to prevent hair loss, we absolutely need to reduce the arterial plaque buildup in our blood vessels. And fortunately, we have pumpkin seed oil that might help in this. That's why you know a lot of doctors tell you guys not to smoke right after a hair transplant. 
because it narrows the blood vessels in the scalp which can reduce the hair growth and also cause miniaturization. Pumpkin seed oil also reduces atherosclerosis. If we want to preserve our hairs, it's, it's critical that we prevent arterial buildup. And so there's been a known correlation between hair loss and cardiovascular disease. It shows that male pattern baldness has been associated with an increased risk of heart disease. So the chronic inflammation that triggers arterial plaque in our scalp blood vessels is also the same chronic inflammation that triggers arterial plaque in the heart. There's also a study that were done on rats that were switched from a high diet in unsaturated fats to a diet rich in saturated fats. So the rats that were actually on a diet richer in unsaturated fatty acids decreased atherosclerosis. Um, this was attributed to the anti-inflammatory properties of the phytochemicals in pumpkin seed oil. So in other words, studies confirmed that these fatty acids are pro-heart and pro-hair, and these fatty acids are also carriers of pumpkin seed oil's rich mineral content, minerals that are required for proper metabolism, cell function, and even hair growth. There's another study that also shows zinc deficiency is associated with patchy and diffuse forms of hair loss in children. And a recent meta-analysis found that people with alopecia areata had lower serum zinc levels compared to healthy individuals. So pumpkin seed oil is obviously abundant in these following minerals, um, zinc, magnesium, iron, and calcium. And as a result, consuming it regularly may have a protective effect against nutrient deficiency-driven hair loss. So in conclusion, pumpkin seed oil probably has a protective effect against more hair thinning since it's shown to reduce the chronic inflammation and atherosclerosis. Um, these conditions eventually trigger fibrosis and calcification. So anything that can prevent them will help with our hair health. Moreover, the constituents in pumpkin seed oil such as linoleic acid, phytosterols, and tocopherol may also improve cardiovascular health. So in conclusion, we know that the phytosterols in pumpkin seed oil have shown to have inhibitory actions in the 5-alpha reductase, the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. Um, we know that high levels of DHT in the scalp are correlated with hair pattern baldness. And therefore, pumpkin seed oil may actually be a natural DHT blocker with pro-hair effects. So if you guys are interested, the daily dosage of pumpkin seed oil is around 400 milligrams. I'm also going to start taking um, pumpkin seed oil into my regimen because, as you guys know, I stopped taking finasteride. And over the uh, past few months, I've been actually looking for an alternative of finasteride. I'm going to be taking this. I'm also going to be doing other research on other vitamins and natural known products. And so I'll keep you guys updated. But thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, feel free to subscribe, like my videos, and I'll talk to you guys soon.